Great Plains is a simple abstract game uh, with a strong puzzle element. It is for two players only. I picked it up on my friendly local game store because it looked really nice uh, and I liked the image on the back in particular. I decided to give it a try. It wasn't very expensive. I played it two players with my daughter Amelia and we enjoyed again as a light filler for two players only. I think you can enjoy it as a play with your spouse only as a play with your spouse also, uh, if your spouse is not a hardcore gamer, which is something that happens in many families apparently, uh, because again, it's nice and simple, it looks it looks uh, very good, has nice production value, so that it'll also be attractive. The general idea is that we're gonna shuffle these tiles and we're gonna place them randomly to form the land, the land of the kind that you see here. Each player will have a tribe with the nice wooden pieces of different color and different shapes. You will place these uh, pl these tokens on the board, uh, following rules that I'll explain later. The general idea is though that ultimately we're trying to take control of these regions that are formed of yellow yellow grass. At the end of the game, if a player has majority in a certain region, say this is five spaces, so a player has three out of five. The player controls the region and the player scores a number of points equal to the number of spaces in the region, so that would be 5, plus 1 for each spring in the region. So that region right now, at the end of the game, that region will be worth uh, 6 points, 5 plus 1. This also means that it's very important after you place the... the um, the tiles randomly to create the play area that you check really you're not supposed to the rules don't say that you should do that but my recommendation is that it's important that you check that there isn't an area that is uh, uniquely a lot more valuable than everything else on the board if you're placing tiles randomly and this is the configuration then you're going to have an area that is worth one two three four five six seven eight nine points and everything else is worth three three two points one point even then the game is going to be a fight a tug of war for that region with not a lot of other things happening you still then of course have to do other things but to me that reduces the fun of the game so i mean that's that's how we have been playing it we checked that there isn't an area that is obviously a lot better than anything else and then the game is a lot more fun now at the beginning of the game, uh, players place these tiles here representing the starting places of their of their tribes and they place them on these symbols here on the mountains. And so, for example, I go there and I go there and my opponent will place them there. Booyah. This is also the only time in the game where you will be placing uh, game pieces on the mountains otherwise all the game pieces will be placed in the lowlands which are the yellow areas and the green areas so that also show those symbols that you see there then very simple like in good old there's a certain classic feel to it like you know good old extra games from tradition players simply alternate placing pieces in the lowlands and so um, when you place a piece it needs to be either next to one of your tent markers so that would be illegal placement or next to a piece that you place there previously like so for example when you place a game piece in an area that has one of those symbols you take the corresponding uh, cardboard tile and you place it in your play area if there aren't any available then you simply place your token as normal but you don't get the tile which means that hoarding some tiles in some cases may be a valid strategy when you place your tokens, you can also choose to spend these tiles uh, to perform specific actions that uh, usually have to do, again, with, with placement. For example, uh, since I usually cannot place uh, a token when th where there is one of my opponent, I could spend one of these horse tiles to place a new tile, a new token, up to uh, up to two hexes away, basically an intervening hex, including jumping over other pieces. So, for example, by spending a horse, I could do that, so skipping the one in the middle, and also I could do that, sort of jumping over the head of my opponent. An eagle, an eagle allows me to skip over, to place a 
a marker skipping over a mine town, a mountain tile. So I'm flying on the back of the eagles, which is really super cool. And you can use it only to skip over mountains, not over lowlands. And same with the horse, you can skip over lowlands, not over mountains. The bear, the bear can be a bit aggressive because the bear allows me to place a tile, place a token in an area where there is a token of my opponent pushing them, pushing them away. In the case, maybe that wasn't super smart because I pushed them in an area where they would score points. So suppose that instead I use my bear to place a token here and I push this guy there, that way. So this is how you use the token, to skip over land, to skip over mountains, or to push away the tokens of the opponent. So it's pretty much as simple as that. Players keep alternating, placing tokens, again, next to their original tribe marker there, next to previously placed uh, markers, unless they are breaking the rules by using these tokens, and you continue until all markers representing tribes have been placed at that point you check majority for each for each um, yellow area and you score points based on that so it's a very simple game uh, again there's a very classic feel to it very you know classic feel of astro games from uh, from ancient tradition but with uh, the unique play, unique powers with the limited resources that really give it a bit of a, of a modern feel to it. It's a simple filler, mind you, I don't know that anybody, this will become oh, the new favorite game of, of anybody, but I think it is a solid filler. It is a solid two-player game, again, to play with a younger gamer, to play with a spouse who's not into hardcore games, to play with your hardcore game friend who came over a little before game night saw it, and so you just uh, crack this open and, and give it a go. Uh, it's a simple filler, but it is pleasant because it has enough interesting options there, including, you know, the, the basic trade-off that the green spaces give you tokens, but don't give you points. So the yellow spaces are what you actually need to win the game, but um, you get more more often and more efficient if you use some of these. So you have that very simple, very basic, but honestly effective uh, trade-off of uh, spaces that score you or spaces that give you resources that may or may not be used effectively to score more. Again, the only minus which is easily corrected is that uh, the initial configuration may uh, simply channel gameplay towards certain areas and then the game uh, becomes a lot less interesting a lot more repetitive and frankly if somebody takes control of the huge air that gives you 10 points I don't know that there's a lot else that's going to happen. But if you have uh, scoring areas spread out and more evenly placed, like you have seen this, this is a configuration that I play, for example. So if you have a situation like the one that you see here, then the game is a lot more interesting because it is still about some areas that look a lot more interesting than others. But then there are certain areas like this one that's perfectly, perfectly legit, perfectly worthy three points that I can get to easily and, and also there may be larger areas remember you don't have to occupy everything you can just occupy a single space and if the opponent neglects to bring there any opposition or decide it's not worth it then that is enough so you then when the board is a little more balanced you have a nice uh, range of options as you can go for an area that doesn't score much but also doesn't take you much doesn't take a lot of resources uh, to score or you can try to of course oppose an opponent and sometimes you oppose them just to take their majority but wouldn't it be great if I could actually instead of just blocking your majority get majority myself so for a simple game you have a nice interesting range of possibilities interesting decisions and thing to do um, again it can get a little confrontation as you are literally blocking the opponent by going to a certain area if you're trying to block certain passages so but again then you get the tokens so that can be maybe some moments can be a little annoying if there's an air that scores a lot and you push away somebody by using the token but hey, I played it again with, with my kids and, and they, they really don't like oppositional gameplay too much and this wasn't too much for them. So I think this is, uh, this is something most gamers will be able to take. 
So in general, great planes. You have a game that really looks nice, very pleasant wooden components, thick cardboard tiles. Keep an eye on the random placement at the beginning and correct as needed to make sure that the gameplay will have many directions in which you can go. And then what you got is a game that is very simple, certainly a filler, but has enough decisions, has enough meat in there to be entertaining.